So this one's gonna be all about writing. Since um, I'm actually writing quite a lot at this point of time, uh, writing a lot for me means that I'm just, uh, I don't know, writing some blog posts. And I'm also just trying to just make them a little tiny bit better, not just uh, some things, not just, um, I don't know, a few sentences as I've done it for just really a long time, but now really trying to craft something and trying to get some thoughts out in a proper way. And this is one uh, reason why I want to go through something about writing. On the other hand, I do think that because I'm going to have my exam the next week, my German exam, maybe this is also something that can help me, I guess. I mean, yeah, we're going to go through On Writing by Stephen King. And yeah, we're going to skip the intro, but what we're not going to skip is dealing with the acoustic because it is really, really not well. So let's do this. Let's do that. Let's have it like there. And it is a, a little bit better. You know, I don't want to say that it is good. It's by far not good. But, but it is at least, I can at least work with that uh, to some degree, you know? Yeah. Hello? Yes, it is, it, it is a little bit better. You know, it's not good, as I said, but yeah. Anyway, we're just going to go ahead, I think. We're just going to uh, start. On Writing by Stephen King. Which is, by the way, a pretty interesting thing to, to write a book about writing, you know, which is a pretty meta um, thing to do. High-level thoughts. Of the books on writing better, this is my favorite. It has less direct technical advice than on writing well, but it carries you along, uh, along better and has more stories in it. I think you should read both, though. Uh, on writing well, by the way, I just also wanted to go through that one, but, uh, but yeah, I've then just decided to, well, you know, let's just take this one. I don't actually know why. Maybe I'm also going to be able to go through both of them today, which would be kind of the optimal scenario, but, but we will see. We will see. Uh, summary notes. We are writing. Oh, we are writers and we n never ask one another where we get our ideas. We know we don't know. <laughs> yes, indeed. Good ideas appear out of nowhere from seeming, uh, seemingly unrelated concepts coming together and creating a new thought in our heads or in your head. You can't force this process. Your job is to recognize when they show up and take advantage of them. When you first write something, you should write it for yourself. When you rewrite it, rewrite it for everyone else. Take out everything that isn't the story. And once it is out there, you don't own it anymore. Everyone else does. Which is, by the way, something that I've heard before and that I've seen before. I don't know where I've heard it. I really don't know. But, um, but yeah, I think it is actually the truth, you know, once you publish something, then it is um, not uh, yours anymore. You know, of course, there is your name on it and stuff, you know, and, and practically it is copyrighted by you as well, probably, or by your agency or management or whatnot. But um, I don't know, you know, people are going to do whatever with it. People are going to share it. People are going to talk about it. People are going to uh, whatnot with it. Life is not a support system for art, art is a support system for life. And keep your desk in the corner to remind yourself of this. Quote unquote, keep your desk in the corner. Come at writing, any, uh, come at writing anyway, but lightly. You can't feel any emotion but apathy. What is apathy? I don't know what apathy is. Indifference, lack of interest, lack of enthusiasm. What? Come at writing anyway, but lightly. You can't feel any emotion but apathy. Mm, I don't know. The writer's toolbox. Uh, build a toolbox of your writing skills and keep refining the tools in your toolbox. Common tools, tools go on top. The more specialized tools go on bottom. You should only have three or four levels to it. I, see, I think it is about styles, isn't it? You know, it is about like... Um, I don't know. Something that I've definitely seen is that less is more when it comes to writing and also when it comes to communicating. Unless you really need it. And, well, maybe not less is more, but just, just just being efficient with your writing. In terms of, like, if you want to spread a message, if you want to spread something, then you should really have it uh, pretty compact. You should really have it have it in a way of... Um, I mean, like, you, you shouldn't beat around the bush. You shouldn't uh, just have too much text for too little of advice, unless you think you need it, you know? So, but, but if you don't need it, then it is something that's pretty unnecessary. The thing is, of course, you know, we just then decide in the end what we need or how much we need and um, how much we can just cut out, uh, which just totally comes up to you, you know, and what you think about things and what you think is important and what is not important and what, um, what is too much and what is too little and all sorts of things. 
Uh, top of the toolbox. The commonest tool is vocabulary. You must have a rich technical vocabulary, but you shouldn't make any effort to improve it. You shouldn't make any efforts to improve it or your writing will sound stilt. Stilted. Stilted. Which, by the way, is a pretty interesting thought because... I always thought that, okay, you know, I'm going to use a uh, very um, elaborated and or just very high level vocabulary and and stuff like that. But in the end, um, I actually really have to say, most often when you're writing in this way, when you're writing in a, a very, there is a word. If you're writing in a very, um, in a very just, just, uh, I'm talking to the government style thing, uh, most often it's really shit. You know, because you're not speaking like you speak, you're speaking like somebody else, maybe, and you're just speaking like, I don't know, it's just, is not good. I don't know why I can't really explain it, but it is not good. Use the first word that comes to mind if it is appropriate and colorful. Actually, <laughs> I mean, it's probably kind of the best word that you have. Of course, I mean, of course, you could just have a look at a dictionary, you could just use other words. And what the, but I, but I don't really believe that it is about words. Words words can say a lot, but if you use words in the wrong way, then they just also say a lot, but a, a lot of negative shit. But I think it really comes up to your structure. And if you're having good structure, and if you're having clean structure, then it's always going to be fucking good. Whether you're using those high-level amazing words or no, um, doesn't matter that much. Also, need grammar on the top, yes. <laughs> <laughs> would kind of be good. Active versus passive words, always better to go active. And there is an example. The meeting will be held at 7 o'clock versus the meetings at 7. Uh, the body was carried from the kitchen and placed on the Paolo sofa versus Freddy and Miro carried the body out of the kitchen and laid it on the Paolo sofa. The rider threw the rope and not the rope was thrown by the rider. Yes. So you should be active and not that much passive. I don't actually know why, to be honest. But, you know, it might be explained in a book, but it is not there. So, so I don't know. The adverb is not your friend, just kill them all. And many adjectives too. Interesting. You know, because I was always told like, you know, use a lot of adjectives and stuff, you know, because it makes things better and more colorful and more like um, interesting because it's, it's not always the, the exact same shit, but... But I don't know, I think in the end it's just really about being clean. And as clean as you possibly can be. And I think this is what you do by plainly um, cutting out a lot of fucking things. So yeah. Then the next one is he closed the door firmly versus he slammed the door. Uh, well, what is better? I know it's, it's of course different. So, ah, I see. He closed the door firmly and he slammed the door. And since it is about adverbs, you shouldn't be using them. So if you close something firmly... You shouldn't say that he slammed the door. He closed the door firmly. He slammed the door. Hmm. Hmm. I don't really understand why. But I just see that it is... I think I gotta have to try that out. You know, I, I kind of feel like that it is not a good idea to just try that out when I'm in my exam. On one hand. On the other hand, it would just also be kind of an interesting thing to do so. But, but I also don't know if it is just only um, applicable to fictional writing. But I don't think so. I don't necessarily think so. And the last one is also don't overstate the dialogue attribution. Put down the gun. Utterson, uh, Jekyll graded. Overstate the dialogue attribution. I don't know what this means. But maybe you know. And then it is fine. And I'm fine with that as well. If you want to be a writer, you must do things above all others. Read a lot and write a lot. There is no way around these two things. And I'm aware of no shortcuts. Of course, because there is no fucking shortcuts, motherfucker. You can learn what not to do by reading bad prose and later mediocre prose. The problems will stand out as little as, as little breaks in your experience. The dialogue in The Martian is a good example of this. <laughs> well, um, but I still think that The Martian is a pretty good book, though. I actually gotta have to show you the site by... By the way, the link to this summary is down in the description. And there's also a funny summary of The Martian, uh, which is really... Interesting. Still, I believe the first draft of a book, even a long one, should take no more than three months the length of a season. The, the length of a season. I like to get 10 pages a day, which amounts to 2,000 words. Does it? I don't know. Like, it just depends on the size of your pages. That's 180,000 words over a three-month span, a good length for a book. Something in which the reader can get happily lost if the tale is done well and stays fresh. I suggest a thousand words a day, and because I'm feeling magnanimous, 
magnanimous, mag, mag, magnanimous, which means generous. I'll also suggest that you can take one day off a week, at least to begin with. Oh, you can take one day a week off, at least to begin with. I see. Yeah, why not? I mean, you shouldn't kill yourself. It should be kind of fun. Of course, it's not always going to be because it is work, you know, work and you're professional. Professionals do things even though they they don't really feel like it. And this is something that I've also seen with the podcast. Like on some days, it's just not as good as, as on some other days. I think, for example, that yesterday in terms of the speaking thing was way better than today. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to do better in the evening. Maybe it's going to be different whenever. But but yeah, today's speaking part is not that good. And also reading. I feel at least like that. If possible, there should be no telephone in your writing room. Certainly no TV or video games for you to fool around with. If there is a window, draw the curtains and pull down the shades unless it looks out unless it looks out at a blank wall at a blank wall. For any writer, but for the beginning beginning writer in particular, it is wise to eliminate every possible distraction. Which I think makes sense, doesn't it? You can write about anything you want so long as you tell the truth. Stories and novels consist of three parts. Narration, which moves the story from point A to point P, and finally to point C. Description, which creates a sense of reality for the reader. And the next one, the key to good description begins with clear seeing and ends with clear writing. The kind of writing that employs fresh images and simple vocabulary. And the last one is dialogue, which brings characters to life through their speech. And I do want to point out and emphasize, the key to good description begins with clear seeing and ends with clear writing, which I think is also like, if your environment is clean and clear and everything, then I guess I I have a feeling. And it is something that I've began to do, but certainly, even though it's not that bad, it really is not that bad, but I kind of stopped to do so. Um, Having a very clean room, I think, leads also to clean thinking and or clear thinking, which which might be kind of a silly thing to, to think about or to say, but maybe there is something to it. I don't know. I really don't. Avoid the sense similar. Sense similar. He ran like a madman. She was pretty as a summer day. The gun was a hot ticket. Bob thought or fought like a tiger. Don't waste my time or anyone's with such chestnuts. It makes you look either lazy or ignorant. So he ran like a madman. She was pretty as a summer day. The guy was a hot ticket. Ah, I see. <laughs> Took me a while. Never tell something you can't show. Hmm. Hmm. This is a very good point. It is kind of the most important pi- point when it comes to presentations, to be honest. And it is always something that teachers tell me and my fellow students that if there's something that you can see, you don't have to say it because it's already there. You know, you don't have to over communicate it. You don't have to do it just two times. You don't have to say like, okay, Here, I used uh, this uh, Helvetica font. People might not know that it is Helvetica, but they clearly see that it is a non-serif font or sans-serif font. So should you point it out? Maybe the name. Should you point out that it is a sans-serif font? No, because we fucking see it. Try any goddamn thing you like, no matter how boringly normal or outrageous. If it works fine, if it doesn't, toss it. Toss it even if you live it. So if it works, fine. If if it does not, toss it. Toss it even if you love it. Sir Arthur Quiller Couch once said, murder your, da- uh, murder your darlings. And he was right. Fuck. I think this is something that my English teacher said to us once. Murder your darlings. Sir Arthur Quiller Couch. I don't know Sir Arthur Quiller Couch. But murder your darlings. I have heard that before. I kind of am tempted to just write her an email and be like, well, did you say this to us? Could this be the case? Of course, in English, you know, then I can also just use my skills once again. Or not. Depends. If you're a beginner, though, let me urge that you take your story through at least two drafts. The one you do with the study door closed and the one you do with it open. The study door. Between drafts, how long you let your book rest, sort of like bread though, between kneadings, is entirely up to you. But I think it should be a minimum of six weeks. During this time, your manuscript will be safely shut away in a desk drawer, a guy aging and, one hopes, mellowing. I think so, by the way. 
I think that it is a good idea, you know, and I think it also just, uh, I think it is also a good idea for design. Because, I mean, if you're designing something, then you might think, well, it is so cool. But after a little bit of time, you might think, well, it is actually pretty shit. And I don't know, I think it just, it would make things better, maybe. I'm not sure. I think it also depends on who you are. Some people are just, I think, pretty good with clear thinking and pretty good with just making things good just right ahead. But yeah, I think that every novelist has a single ideal reader, that at various points during the composition of a story, the writer is thinking. I wonder uh, what he or she will think when he or she reads this part. For me, that first reader is my wife, Tabitha. Or Tabitha. I don't know. The formula is, the second draft is the first draft minus 10%, which once again just cleans everything down. You know, you're gonna cut out all the things that are not important yet. The most important things to remember about backstory are that A, every has a st- everyone has a story and B, most of it isn't very interesting. Stick to the parts that are and don't get carried away with the rest. Writing isn't about making money, getting famous, getting dates, getting laid, <laughs> making friends. In the end, it's about enriching the lives of, of those who will read your work and enrich your own life as well. It is about getting up, getting well and getting over, getting happy, okay, getting happy. Some of this book, perhaps too much, has been about how I learned to do it. Much of it has been about how you can do it better. The rest of it, and perhaps the best of it, it is a permission slip. Is it a rhyme? Does it rhyme? I think it rhymes, doesn't it? You can, you should, and if you're brave enough to start, you will. Writing is magic as much as... uh, it. Writing is magic as much the water of life as any other creative art. The water is free, so drink, drink and be filled up. Note to self, there is a wonderful list of recommended books at the end. Note to self. Of the book, I guess. I assume, I don't know. We are unfortunately 19 minutes in, but I am actually very tempted to go through the other one on writing well. Does he? Did he say on writing well? Yes, he said on writing well. But I think it actually wasn't the one that I... Th- thought about going through was it no it was not actually there because there's other books on writing if i can elaborate on them a bit and show you there they are uh stephen king then the next is nobody wants to read your shit by stephen pressfield it's a good book for some writing tips on making your stories more compelling i see was it the element of style ah it was the element of style but what is this all about? Some very important lessons for the aspiring writer. The best way to use it is to read through it and find the examples where you can immediately tell what is wrong. Study the explanations and then apply those learnings to your writing. I'm actually very tempted. I don't know. I might be going through both of them since. Since. Big since. They're not too long, both of them. But I don't know. I've also just taken fucking 20 minutes for Stephen King's book. But, but I don't know. Like I think I just have to read more. And today... Today, I do a promise. Can I keep that promise? I really am going to try to work hard in terms of like starting to read The Fucking Alchemist, but in German, not in English. I found it in German um, and I'm going to read it in German because for my German exam, you know, because my German is awful. It really is because I'm only reading English stuff and I'm also just only talking in English. Unless I'm just writing and texting with somebody or to somebody, then I'm, I'm obviously... Uh, just not using that much of English. But yeah, anyway. Um, I'm gonna end the episode. So I wish you the best health and happiness and also success and also hope that you're gonna remind yourself and you're gonna be remembered. Which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person and then also being remembered as a nice person. Which is a good thing. Which is an amazing thing. Anyway. I could actually also do just some some writing things. Maybe, hmm... Hmm. Something that I could be doing is writing the blog posts in German and then translating them into English via some software. <sighs> I could be doing this. It's it's not really something that I like to be doing. I mean, of course, I could also just translate them from English to, to German as well. But, but, but yeah, it's a little bit nonsensical. Kind of. Anyway, another question that I, question that I want to give you is... What could you make? What could you say? What could you create that really uh, gives something to somebody's life? Could you make something? Could you do something? Is there something bad that you could be doing? Because I think that there is something. I think that there is something great that you can do. But yeah. 
three other questions that that are there are why are you here what are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most these three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea which is a pretty huge and important thing so think about it and, and have a look at it and by the way if you are such a person that is very good at writing then you are fucking and you should be fucking grateful because most often it is the case that when people are writing good and I do not necessarily want to say those people with good grades in school, even though I believe when it comes to writing that um, that grades can just still say something. Because, of course, uh, it, it, it depends on the, your, your teacher as well, of course. But if they say that you're writing well, then it probably also means that you're writing pretty much clean, you know. And and they also know stuff. Like, I just, I don't know, I I think that those teachers that are just, um, I don't know, English or German teachers or whatnot, they know something about writing, they have read quite a lot, they had to fucking study that shit, also historical things as far as I, I can tell actually, and yeah, I think they really know shit, and, but of course, there's going to be some good teachers, and there's going to be some bad teachers, and there's going to be some teachers that just don't know shit, yeah, but those people, they I don't know, like they're pretty... Pretty, pretty, pretty much privileged with being able to write very well because this means that they are communicating very well and being able to communicate very well is a fucking good thing. But not necessarily because I mean Gary Vee is also a fucking good communicator, one of the best fucking communicators we're having at this fucking point of time, I think. But um, yeah, but he's a fucking bad writer as far as I can tell, you know, or he just doesn't want to do that. But but yeah, anyway. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that, but I think that, uh, that I don't know, it, it's good to be a good writer. Yeah. As also Tim Ferriss said. Anyway, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. I'm hopefully going to see you the next time. The next episode is going to be again about writing because it's cool. I just appreciate that. And I'm going to see you the next time. Bye bye. Please stay healthy and stay cool, patient, generous, and kind. <laughs>